Hi, I'm Josh Merwin, founder of the International Sports Film Festival Houston. I'm here with Rosie Walker. Um, I've gotten to know Rosie's son, Michael Montgomery, really well over the past couple months. Um, so we wanted to interview Rosie for uh, Women's History Month and doing some stories and um, interviews on women in sports. Um, so I wanted to uh, kind of let Rosie kind of tell us about herself and your athletic career. Uh, uh, just like I said, my name is Rosie Walker, and, and I have a... I've had a, a good basketball career. I, as let me give you some of my accolades. Uh, I started out playing basketball when I was in the seventh grade, and uh, on the weekends, all the guys in the neighborhood would come to our house to play basketball. And the only thing we had was a. You're good. Uh, it was a, a barn with a, a basketball, I mean, so a, 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 a bicycle rim held up with a nail and chicken wire. And everybody came on the weekend and played basketball and during the summer at, at our house with a flat basketball. And then I started playing basketball when I was in the seventh grade. Well, so means, I'm going to ask you some questions with that. Okay. So where you, where are you from? Where did you grow up? I grew up in Emerson, Arkansas, and I played at Emerson School, Emerson Junior High and Emerson High School. You said so. You said a flat basketball, so it had just a little bit of air. Just a little bit of air. Sometimes the guys would take it and air it up, but you know the air wouldn't last very long because it had a hold in it. And by the end of the day, the ball was flat, and so by the end of the day, you couldn't walk once the ball went flat. So they learned to cut, sit, pick, pick and roll, and and do all that stuff. They they was great basketball ball, uh, players. Who um? So who who made the basket in the rim from the bicycle do you remember was that one of your parents or was it somebody else in the neighborhood do you know how it originally got put up oh no my, my dad my brothers put it up because i had thir it was 13 of us oh, wow. so our dad was really strict and our mothers was strict so the girls couldn't go anywhere so the guys liked the girls so they just uh start playing basketball at our house coming on the weekend and the in the summer months to play basketball and um that's when they develop uh, the the tire and everything, and and that's where they would come. That's where I just developed. So you have thirteen. There's twelve, thirteen total. So you have twelve. Hours. Was it mostly I, girls or? Mixed? It was ten girls and three boys. It was thirteen total. Wow. And you said so the, your parents wouldn't let the girls go anywhere. So the boys came over to to yeah. talk to y'all and play basketball. Yeah, they was liking the girls, but they really was coming to see the girls but they were saying he was coming to play basketball and my dad was really strict you know he <laughs> if he had a new batter they wouldn't have came what um so i mean i assume when it started you were just watching them play how did yeah. you when's the first time you picked up a ball uh you know i picked up a ball you know like in yeah like i was like i was 11 years old and after they left you know girls were not allowed to play with the guys in the 60s in the early 70s so when they left me and my sister mildred and my mother we would get out and play a little bit before the sun went completely down because everybody had to be at home when the sun went down yeah so your mom played a little bit too. My mother was an excellent basketball player. She was the star of her team uh, when she played. And where is she? Is she from Arkansas as well, or where did she grow up? She <clears throat> grew up in um, in, in 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 Arkansas. She grew up in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. So she was able to play basketball when she was a, a kid. Yes, they played. You know, back in the days, they played uh, when she was a kid and in high school, and until she graduated, she played. Of course, they didn't have the opportunities like we did to go to college. And you know, back in those days, as soon as their career was over in high school, they, you know, everybody got married and had children, but they didn't have the opportunities that we had. What? Um, so when she was in high school, what year was that approximately? When? What, when your your mom was in high school? I have what no year that was. <laughs> I'm like trying to do the math in my head, but I'm like, I can't even. <laughs> I, I really don't know. I, I hadn't even thought about that. Okay. Um, so did your dad play basketball or play sports at all? No, my dad didn't play. Okay. So, so did your, who's the oldest? Do you have, you, you're not the oldest? No, I am the 11th child. 11th child. Okay. So I got, uh, how many more? Did, like, <laughs> above ten, me and I got two more. under me. I got two, oh, two and above oh, me. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Um, so did so who taught your your other siblings that were older to play sports? Uh, you know, at every high school they had 
sports, uh-huh. junior high and high school, and that's where my sister was. Really and you know, I think one of my brothers played, but I think all the girls literally played, but one I think, but everybody else played. We just played the high school, just like you know. That was like in the 50s, 60s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. So they didn't have opportunities yeah. like I did in the 70s. Did your parents come to any games? Yeah, my dad came to most of all of the game, yeah. the home games. My mother, she don't, I can remember her coming to one game because at that time my mother and father had separated. So yeah. my mother was stuck with like seven children. Yeah. So she had to leave the house <laughs> and go to work. <laughs> so my mother, I think I can remember her coming to one game. One game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't. I mean, it's hard enough with two kids. I can't imagine. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot I guess of kids. We have that many. I guess maybe some of the other, some of the older kids take on a little bit of the parenting roles, right? The, the older kids, you know, babysit. They cook. They yeah. they watched they, over yeah, us, yeah. comb their hair, make sure we was, you know, bath Presentable. and everything yeah. ready to go to bed. But my mother went out to work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. What did she do? I uh, she worked at some tree plant okay. in um, Arkansas somewhere in for. for, for some arcs I can't remember the name. Okay. Um, cool. So when did you know you were, you, obviously you were very good at basketball. When did you know you were good? You know, it's a shame. I really didn't know I was really that good until two months ago. I started reading the articles and I was reading the articles. I said, dang, I was a good basketball player. <laughs> you didn't know until two months ago? I, I really did not know. And I was reading those articles and I saying like, a six-time Hall of Famer, four-time All-American. Uh, my team won the WBL the year I played. I got most valuable player. And uh, and it was just, I got 1979-80 Player of the Year. It was just so many awards and all Amer- just everything. I, I really didn't know because, you know, back in those days, they taught us, you get out there and play and let me worry. You get an award, you'd be happy you got it, and you just take it and, and hang it and sit it somewhere in your house or your apartment. That's mm-hmm. amazing. Um, okay, so you talked about a little bit of your accol- accolades. So you played in college. Uh-huh. Where was that again? I played at Panola Junior College where we won two national championships. We won uh, our conference both years and in, in the national championship I got one time I got most valuable player. Uh, but you didn't know you were very good. I did not know <laughs> I was that good. That's amazing. Um, and then tell me about the Olympics because you played in the Olympics as well. How did that come about? What timing was that? Well, th- that was the year that the Olympics was barcoded, remember, because uh, okay. it was, somebody was at war and America did not go. But we did have a chance to go to the White House. And, and I met the President Carter and I shook his hand and, and they had us to stay a whole week there in Washington where we visited the, the White House. And uh, just like I said, shook the hand with the President. And they had all kinds of things. They'd had us a parade and have professional singers to come in and sing for us. And, and, and we just had a good time just because we did not get a chance to go to the Olympics. What, in what year was that? 1980. 1980 was when? But I did make the, the, the Olympics. But I, who was fighting? Uh, I made the Olympic team and we did not get a chance to participate in the 1980 Olympic because of it was barcoded. That means that America did not go to participate in the Olympics in Russia. Um, yeah, in Moscow. And it's, it's, I mean, it's crazy that we're doing this interview now. And with everything, you know, unfortunately going on with Russia invading Ukraine, yeah. and, and I think also waiting until after the Olympics were over to, to start that, yeah, um, was you know uh, pretty amazing and unfortunate, obviously, kind of yeah, a little bit of history repeating itself. Yeah, after how I many forty years, yeah. forty two years, it's, yeah. yeah, it's so sad. Um, I, I guess the, my other question too is, you know, did did you? have to fight against any racism while you were growing up and playing basketball and playing sports? You, you know, racism was very present everywhere you went. And just like I was always said, if I looked for uh, problems and issues, I saw things, but I chose to ignore them because it's not really anything we can do about it. <laughs> but racism go always be on existence, but it's not up to how I handle not up to how other people handle racism is how I handle and you know a lot of things I looked over and uh, 
my accolades that I received, you know, you know, a black girl like in 1979 in the All-Star game, I got most valuable player and they was kind of upset. They wanted to give it to another girl. But because I was a black woman, I don't feel like they was really wanted to give it to me. But I played such a uh outstanding basketball game and I got injured in the game and we was winning and then I come back in the game we was losing and so we end up going ahead and winning the game it was so obvious until they couldn't give it to anybody else yeah I mean it's kind of amazing what I guess athletes have been able to do on the on the court and on the field that, yeah that is pushed back to, back against racism and anti-semitism in society oh Yes, um, I, you know, uh, it is when it, it is so hard when, um, you know, you look that because of the color of your skin and and when it's so easy to love and it don't take any effort, it comes so naturally. But other people chooses to hate because of the color of your skin. I feel like it's a form of ignorance, but. You know, everybody else got their own opinion. But I know for me, I love all people. Black, white, green, Mexican, yellow, orange. It's up to Rosie to love. And that's what I'm going to do. That's awesome. Um, I just want to show the picture and I'll scan this in. But this is, what year was this? That's when I played professional basketball team. That is my professional <laughs> basketball team. Uh, oh, wow, what is this picture? This the cowgirl. No, there was like the, the cowgirl. <laughs> this is Olympic. <laughs> that's that's the Olympics. That's the Olympics. Oh wow, I'll scan. I'll have to scan these, and um, that's amazing. And this is the uh, Pan American. So, Pan American Games. And these are pa that's Pan American. So I guess tell you know did you I, did, I mean I, I assume you didn't travel much as a kid. This is Lady Jack and the, the um, that's the Lady Jack Stephen F Austin. Oh, you played with Stephen F Austin. Yeah, after I left junior college, Panola Junior College. That's the All American team. Kodak. <laughs> um, so. I mean, obviously, when you were in college, you started traveling to play other teams. What, did you travel when you were a chi younger child or not at all? No, we didn't travel when we was young. Everybody yeah. was. <laughs> yeah, no, I assume not. I mean, I, I assume nobody. I mean, you yeah. know, but, but my mother took us on a picnic. Yeah. On the, oh, you know, she took us to a picnic. That was about as good as it got. You know, you know, it wasn't like it was. This is the 60s, 50s, 60s yeah. and yeah, 70s. Yeah. It wasn't anything. Yeah, you didn't do it. Yeah. There's nowhere to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, how, but once you started traveling, I guess college was the first time you started traveling? Yes, college was the first time I started traveling. And, and that round basketball that had no area in it have taken me all over the <laughs> world. It have taken me to almost every state in the United States. And I have met presidents. I have shook the hand with president. I have met people uh, high up, high name, big people that I would have never met if it hadn't been for that round ball. What um what countries have you traveled to? We went to uh, we went to Switzerland and um, Japan and uh, uh, France, Mexico. Uh, I mean it, Italy, Mexico, and um, I got it written down, but I can't remember. <laughs> no, it's fine. That's I mean it's no, it's amazing how uh, much you know international travel and exposure you get to different cultures that a sport has taken you yes it has it has you know and a career was my favorite place korea mm -hmm. why uh, that army base <laughs> the army base what was it the army base yeah. boys <laughs> <laughs> that's funny yeah um so how long did you play before Michael was born, and, and I haven't even asked him, do, do you have other kids as well? I got, a, I got you know, another son. Son, okay. I got That's a, what I thought. I have a son I had in the 12th grade, and he's 45 or 46 now. And then I, play, I, I played for uh, about 
11 years before I had, had Lil Mike, I played high school, and then I played college, and then one year pro, and um, that was about 11 years. I had Lil Mike when I was 25. Did you play after you had Mike, or you retired after? No, I started coaching. Coaching, that's uh-huh. right. Yeah. Yeah. So how was that a natural transition? What was that transition like? It was so natural because I had... I had so much knowledge of the game that it was a great experience to share with the other kids the knowledge that I had gained from traveling all over the world and playing basketball on the highest level. It was just uh, amazing. I have had some great teams, even uh, one in junior high. And, you know, it was a struggle because about that time when I was coaching, there's no pass, no play. If they didn't pass them grades, they didn't get a chance to play. So it was kind of a struggle there. But uh, I had some success with teams. And so tell us some of your coaching accolades as well, because you're very accomplished. Huh? And your coaching accolades as well. And- I, I just, I did um, junior high and I did high school and, you know, I won, you know, the the little stuff. High school, we never did go, go to state or anything. And, and I did a couple of years of college and I, and I really can't remember. What <laughs> I really How, where were you living during these times? I, I lived in Carthage. I lived in Texarkana. I lived in... Uh, Tinny Hall, and I lived in um, where uh, Center, Texas, and that's where I got injured, breaking up a fight between two guys uh, on the middle school campus. I had left the high school to come to the junior high so I can go to Little Mike's uh, football games, and two guys got into it, and I ended up trying to break up the fight at Center Middle School. And I ended up with 11 ruptured, bulging, herniated discs, two oh broken God. ribs. And they cut me off my workers' comp and fired me from my job and denied me any income for 11 years. And I'm still trying to get my money uh, today. Really? Yes. Interesting. I mean, not interesting. That's horrible. I'm sorry. It's terrible. <laughs> and I serve just like I serve my country. And my country do me like this. And just like Brittany, I'm going to bring Brittany Grind up. And Brittany have nothing to do with this war. But I truly believe they are using her as an escape goat. Uh, and as soon as they caught her, they had her to sign a paper that everything she in his suitcase is hers. And... Uh, and it was Russia, I believe, that set her up. But I lived in America, and I served my country, and I get done worse than... They can't send me to prison. You know why? Because they can't find anything i done. I live a clean life and lifestyle. So... I hope, yeah. I mean, I, I hope that Brittany gets... I hope she, I hope she out come out very quickly. Yeah, because I, I met her one day at Walmart, uh, little Mike, saying, Mama, that's Brittany. I didn't even know where she was. She was very tall. <laughs> little Mike. How old was Mike? He's no, 30. How old was he then? Oh, he, when he met Brittany? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it would have been about uh, 12 years ago, I think. 12 years ago? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, it ain't been, they been tw- Yeah. Yeah, he was about, I don't know how, it had been about 12 years yeah. since we've seen Brittany. So tell me about getting him into sports and how how that started and kind of were you influencing him or was it just he just did he see you play at all or were you you were probably coaching by then right yeah I was West coaching he yeah. wasn't born when I was playing but he, him started off he could play basketball I didn't want him to play football because I didn't want nobody hitting my baby <laughs> so I wouldn't let him play football until he got in the tenth grade yeah. and when he got in the tenth grade the coach said. Miss Rosie, just let him try it for the team. If he don't like it, he can quit. I said, okay. I said, I don't want them to hit my baby. So, and little Mike said, Mama, those licks feel good. I said, okay, we'll go out there and play. <laughs> I just went a moment to hear. <laughs> yeah. And then I knew, I knew nothing about football. I didn't know offense from defense. And I kept, and I was saying, why the coach keep taking little Mike out? She said, because he look like on defense. And that's the offense of it. <laughs> I love that you call him Little Mike. He's not little. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, I know. It's cute. I like it. Okay. Um, that's funny. So what, 
So was he, but he was really good at basketball too, right? Yeah, he was really good at basketball and football. You know, he could have went either way. He could have went in football or to college, or he could have went in basketball, and he chose football. Um, so it seems like you guys are pretty close. Yes, I am close with both of my children. You know, my family, my, uh, 90% of us, 99, it's loving family is everything. Always, always uh, love your family. Even though if people, do, if they do you wrong, find a way to love. You live sense. longer. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, what was it like when he was being recruited to college? Oh, well, it was really exciting but, but you know what after basketball high school we had uh scholarships to go other places but my coach wanted us to go to panola me and my sister it was me and my sister so we ended up going to panola college and and uh it was really exciting i guess to get a chance to go to college because really when i was going to college it was about the time they started giving scholarships. If it was not for the scholarship, I never would have went to college because I couldn't afford it. My family couldn't afford to pay for me to go to college. Um, and then what about, so when you were, was, what about Mike's recruitment when he was recruited for college? How was that? Oh yeah, he, he it was exciting when he when he went to college. I was kept telling him, "You need to make sure you get all get your grades so you can go to D one." But he was just they were satisfied making a seventy, so he ended up going to Navarro Junior College and uh, he went there for a couple of years, and then he went to A and M, and then from A and M, uh, the uh, Green Bay Packers recruit. He's uh, not recruited. Drafted. Drafted him. Let's back up to him a little bit because okay. you're missing kind of a big part of his story, right? Okay. Um, I mean, when he, you know, so when he signs with, when he goes to A&M, obviously I assume you're pretty excited. Yeah. When he went, transferred to A&M, did, did you think he had a chance to play professionally? That was always his dream, but he thought it would be in basketball. And, but he, he was, he was an excellent athlete. And I sat there and watched him a play, and he was, he just somehow knew how to maneuver. He was so talented. He just somehow knew how, not because he was my kid, because I was a coach, and I can see talent, and I know talent. He was so talented in football and in basketball. Well, I was being able to read, I mean, I, I'm horrible at basketball, but I also can't read, <laughs> read the court, right? Like, if you, you know, I think growing up as a as a coach's kid is, yeah. is very helpful in that. Yeah. Even if you're not actually teaching him, he's just sitting on the sideline yeah. watching watching you guys play watching from the young age. And sometimes we would be like when he, he had big games at school or at, at our junior college or in, in high school, we would post up in the kitchen or in, in the living room and I would be bumping him and pushing him, showing him how to roll off and how to drop step and how to, and just to remind him what did he need to do. And he, and every time we done that, he played his best game. <laughs> um, so what was it like? Uh, tell me about the day that, you know, that Michael collapsed on the practice field at A&M and kind of what that was like for you. How'd you hear about it? Where were you? I was in a uh, teacher's conference and and the principal came and back then, you know, the cell phone was just coming out yeah. and the principal came and said, we need you to come to the phone. And then A&M coach got on there and said, Miss Rose said, come. Said, Mike's at the hospital. He's getting ready to have surgery. Don't freak out and he said you need to come down as quick as you possibly can and by the time I got there you know they had already had the surgery and everything and and um, it was a scary time I'm sure because we didn't even know yet really about his heart condition we didn't really know about it what um where were you living at the time I was living in Center Texas which is how far because they took him to austin right yeah to austin that's where we met him at at the hospital in austin it took i'm not for sure how long it took mm -hmm. uh, but is it a couple hours you think it was more than a little couple of hours. hours yeah um i'm not great at geography I, and <laughs> at least it was almost six, five or six hours five or yeah. six hours mm -hmm. how, what was that car ride like for you huh what was that car ride like for you were you driving or did you go with somebody 
Was no, I had somebody you. driving me yeah. because I, at that point I was too nervous yeah, sure. <laughs> to drive to thinking about my baby. <laughs> yeah. Did you get information? I guess because you said, you know, cell phones weren't really. That no, they wasn't. Thing. Did you stop on the way and call the hospital or check in or did you just drive straight through and. No, I did not. What happened was I was keeping in contact with the coach uh, and he was informing me on everything that was going on at the hospital. Okay. So that's the way that was. Um, so what was it like when you saw Mike, Michael and knew that he was okay and safe? And I was probably praying in tongues and praising God. <laughs> Yeah, but I, you know, I knew he would be all right. I knew God was going to take care of him because I trusted God to take care of my son when I sent him to college. I said, God, you're better babysitter than I am, and I put both of my children in your hand. So, um, so he 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 has a surgery. Everything's fine. He rehabs. You know, he goes back to college, and then you know, what was the NFL draft like for you guys? Where were you when he got drafted? Were you guys watching it together? Yes, we all went to my oldest brother's house, and we were sitting there waiting. And we thought, because the little Mike uh, got all these accolades, All-American, all big, big 12 defensive of the year, and all these accolades. And we kept waiting and waiting. And then he called, like, the sixth round, uh, the 180 pick. And we was wondering what happened. But they said because he went so low because of the heart surgery that he had. Mm-hmm. I said, heart surgery, didn't play basketball, football, Michael did. And if, if you're a good athlete, I don't care what kind of heart surgery you had. If he performed on the field, he should have went in a higher the first. Or, he could have went second or third or something like that. Third round, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because I, so the way this film festival started is I had a, a film on a University of Texas baseball player that had a kidney transplant. Uh -huh. His name was Carson Kiner. So he was on the 2005 team that won the College World Series for UT. Uh -huh. Got really? drafted by the Reds in 2006. Yeah. Um, had a, had a, his known all his life, he would eventually have to have a kidney transplant. Um, <laughs> but he got drafted by the Reds, had the surgery at Texas Children's Hospital. His dad had played pro ball when he was younger. His dad was a kidney donor. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, gave his, his son the chance. He saved his life and let him chase his dreams of, you know, yeah. At that point, going back to UT for a senior season and ideally getting drafted again, but he, the Reds ended up calling him three weeks after his surgery and said, mm. "Hey, we still want to sign you." I uh, was so yeah. signing like a month or two after his surgery, but again, he was. I, fr I feel like he was drafted in like the 14th round or something yeah. like that, and it was obviously he probably would have been a fifth round draft pick if he didn't have any kidney issues. Yeah, but that's what I don't understand. Like Mike, he injured his knees, he had ruptured discs, and and uh, torn ligaments, ligaments and ACL, they could have fixed that Yeah, when he was in pro and let him go back and play. But uh, today, he still hasn't gotten fixed really? on those surgeries, and he's still fighting for his disability That's with the, yeah. with the uh, um, NFL. NFL. So I'm not seeing, and the same thing happened to me is yeah. happening to my children. And, That's frustrating. And it it is really so, when people could be so evil, it is so much evilness out there. And it, what it looks like is somebody else getting a salary and getting my money, and getting Mike money, and getting Tyrone instead of us. I mean, how kind of just the landscape of sports in general, because obviously the landscape is changing with how much money. Huh? The landscape of sports is, cha is constantly oh, changing. Yes, how much money is 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 there and i mean i think obviously from my perspective the, the nil stuff the name image likeness is finally it's good that kids can finally kind of monetize that but just kind of the overall sports landscape from you know college into the pros i mean obviously you've seen the dark side of it oh, yeah. you know, what are your thoughts overall i mean are you glad he went and played in college and professionally or <laughs> yes because that was his dream to play professional football basketball really but he ended up playing professional football i am so glad all i wish that is he had been treated fairly like the other players yeah. i feel like um Lumai could have been one of the top athletes in the world because he was so talented but looked like somebody wanted to hold him down even playing college and professional football it was just like they was wanting to hold him down. They wouldn't let him 
just get out there and play. And the chance that he got to play, I mean, he got tackles. He was an excellent football player, but I feel like it's, you know, it's just evilness. Uh, it's just pure evil. What, um, all right. So what kind of, what, what kind of person is Mike? He is uh, the best child. Never gave me a minute of trouble. He is humble, and he's just a big, gentle giant. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is big. Hold yeah. on, I gotta check one thing. Um, okay, we got a little bit more time. Um, so what what do you see kind of him doing with his the rest of his life and career? And kind of, did you like it when he started acting? Yeah, yeah, it was a good career. He got movies, he got part, and every time he got in a movie, it looked like something happened to the movie, or the movie stopped, or it got yeah. cut off. Just like the football career, just just like everything. I, I don't know. It, that's a tough filmmaking. is a very tough business. But he he was really good. He got some good parts, and he played some good parts. But you got to have the opportunity and the chance. But every time you get something, you just can't keep being cut off. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what do you see him doing, you know, the next five or ten years? I hope that he can get the surgeries <clears throat> that he needs from being injured in the NFL. And... Okay. Uh, I'm hoping that he can get the surgeries that he needs from being injured from the NFL and that he can go on and live a productive life. And there he's just like me and him. We in pain 24 hours a day. And, and it, it's really not good days for us because of the pain uh, that we in. I got the 11 eruption, herniated, bulging discs in my back and, and my knees. I wore my knees out. I'm just hoping that he can get the surgeries that he need, get his disability from the NFL so at, at almost 40 so he can sit back and relax yeah. and enjoy his life because it's been just a battle every yeah. day. What um I mean he's he's so nice and he's got such a good outlook on life every time I talk to him. Huh? I mean he's he's so nice. He's like, I mean, he's so nice and just such... has a good outlook on life. Like you would never know that he was in pain, you know, if you didn't know. I mean you can look at his his knees, knees the way he walked. Yeah, yeah. You can tell a, a whole lot of time when he in the house. He's trying to rub on something. He's trying to get something Stretched, to get ease the yeah. pain. He's taking pills to try to ease the pain. But, you know, and then when they leave the house, it's just like me. I try to straighten up and yeah. walk so nobody can see me in the condition I am at home. Like, I'm on a walker at home. <laughs> but when I leave the house, I'm not leaving the house with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have grandkids yet? Does your other son have kids? I got one grandson from my oldest child, Tyrone, and he's 25. <laughs> my oh, wow. <laughs> So, and the only thing I got is my grandpa. <laughs> right, <yep. laughs> and that's the only one I got. I, I'm hoping for some grandchildren for Mike. <laughs> I know he's out there dating, so we'll see. <laughs> um, cool. I mean, I guess the other, only other question is, you know, when you were a kid, what, I'll ask us about him too, but when you were a kid, you know, in terms of like, playing sports and getting you know i said you i guess you said they had the you know the basketball room was uh -huh. put up at your house because your siblings but did you think you could be good at, at basketball did you think you could be an athlete what made you think that you like could even play you know i came from a, a population 350 people and the goal was back then to get out of high school you know and um about going to college and playing professional football, Olympics, Pan American, and and playing uh, all of that, you know, it was not registered in our mind because this small school, now they had all this stuff up north, but down south, you know, we didn't hear about all, all of this stuff. And when we was recruited to go to college, you know, we thought, wow, going to college and somebody else pay for it. I, I'm all, I'm a boy, I'm on board. But you know, we didn't. You know, so many things that we did not know about growing up in, and we had uh, about all the opportunities, and they had most of them up north, but we didn't know about this stuff from the south. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I mean, I guess you kind of said earlier, basically, as a, as a 
kid and a girl, you just went out and played with your mom after the boys played. So I guess it was seeing the boys play. Huh? When you were a kid, it was mostly seeing the boys play and then playing with your mom and your sisters. Yes. Kinda, that's kind of what... It was It was just uh, just for fun, yeah. you know. Just uh, They came up and played for fun, and then if they liked it, my sister they got a chance to be with my sister. And my mother, you know, she just got out and played with us because she said, I could play when I was growing up, but me and my sister, we would play for... A minute and rest for ten minutes playing with my mother. <laughs> and so it was not a good game. We played for about uh, twenty minutes, and and eighteen of the minutes we was resting. <laughs> was your mom resting, or she was running you around the court? She was resting. <laughs> yeah, well, so when did that switch? I guess as you got older, you got more energy and and got accustomed to playing. Yeah, oh, yeah. See, my my mother, uh, you know, she couldn't play long, no more than a minute, and then she had the rest. You know, I was always energetic. I was always going. I remember I used to run all the time to my grandmother's <laughs> house. Everybody get in the car. We had cars and trucks, and everybody get in the car and truck. But I would just run to my grandmother's house. <laughs> so that's what I kind of did. You know, that's amazing. How far away did she live? Oh, that probably about. Uh, about a half a mile. Half a mile. Okay. Yeah, so it wasn't far. far. Mm -mm. That's funny. I can just picture you like a little girl running. Like Yeah, just running. To just a little tomboy running up and down <laughs> the road. Playing. I uh, got there by the time they got everybody in the car. Yeah, about truck, right? <laughs> by the time they got there, I was there. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, did your grandmother, when she was younger, play sports? I assume. No, not, they didn't yeah, have no know. basketball. Yeah. <laughs> my grandmother died when she was 103. Oh, my God. <laughs> and they were Emma Cooper. She died when she was 103. My father was Theodore Walker. My mother, Maggie Walker. And then, if you want me to name all my sisters and brother, I can go in order. <laughs> no, I just going to put that on you. No. Um, wow, well, I appreciate the time. I guess were there any other were there any female athletes you looked up to or male athletes too? Kind of growing up. I mean, I guess you, you know it's probably didn't have access to. No, we didn't have access to that. We know we had good players um, growing up, but it wasn't something that we was going to base our life on because, you know, after high school, you went to work. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just where we grew up, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. I don't. I mean, did you know, hear about Thea Gibson when you were a kid? No. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> no. I want to speak with Martin Luther King and the Kennedys, and and then we have our Rosa Park, and um, so far as basketball players, athletes, you know, I didn't even know who Kareem was. That's where I learned my hook from. I had a bad hook in college, uh, and uh, what uh, watching from watching him. Yeah, I went to see a professional basketball game in the seventies. And Kareem was playing. They was playing against somebody. And, and I seen him doing that sky hook. And that's where I got my sky hook from. <laughs> where uh, where did you see him play? Uh, we was in um, Washington. Okay. Mm -hmm. We was in Washington because that's the same time. I went with Stephen F. Austin. We went to the White House. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Cool. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Okay. I, Thanks. I hope I did say something. Great. No, no, you're good. <laughs>